Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at calcium channel blockers, another class of drugs that is commonly used. So first of all, the calcium channel blockers work by, as the name suggests, blocking calcium channels, but specifically they block voltage-gated L-type calcium channels and prevent calcium influx into the cell. Voltage-gated L-type calcium channels are needed for excitation contraction coupling of skeletal, smooth and cardiac muscles. They are also involved in the conduction of pacemaker cells and are needed to regulate aldosterone and cortisol secretion from the adrenal cortex. Therefore, by acting on vascular smooth muscle, calcium channel blockers lead to vasodilation. Remember that calcium channel blockers work on arteries, they do not work on veins. By acting on the cardiac myocytes, they reduce the force of contraction of the heart. This is known as a negative ionotropic effect. They also slow down the conduction of electrical activity within the heart, leading to a slower heart rate. This is known as a negative chronotropic effect. When they block the calcium signal in the adrenal cortex, they lead to a decrease in aldosterone production. You might have heard of dihydropyridine and non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers. This is an important distinction because not all calcium channel blockers act equally on the tissues I just mentioned. Dihydropyridines block the voltage-gated L-type calcium channels, mostly in the smooth muscle. Therefore, you get much more of a vasodilation effect with dihydropyridines. The way I remember this is by dihydropyridines causing dilation. Examples of dihydropyridines are amlodipine, nifedipine, and nicardipine. The non-dihydropyridines block voltage-gated L-type channels mostly in the cardiac tissues, and so they mostly have cardiac effects. They decrease the heart rate by lowering the calcium entry at the SA and AV nodes, leading to a slower conduction. They also decrease contractility of the heart by decreasing calcium entry into the myocytes. Since cardiac output is given by heart rate multiplied by stroke volume, which is tied to contractility, these calcium channel blockers decrease the cardiac output. I remember non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers work more on the heart by using the O in non as a reminder for the heart. Examples include verapamil and diltiazem. Verapamil works strongly on the heart, while diltiazem is a bit more intermediate and still has some vasodilation effects. So what are calcium channel blockers used for? They're often used in chronic hypertension, particularly slow release preparations with a longer half-life that allows for a smoother blood pressure control. Most commonly, dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers like amlodipine are given to treat chronic hypertension. Dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers are also used in hypertensive emergencies. Nicardipine is safe for use in pregnancy and nifedipine can work very, very quickly. Next, we have stable angina. Calcium channel blockers are usually given if beta blockers or nitrates are either contraindicated or not working. Dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers like amlodipine are often the first calcium channel blockers that are used. In stable angina, these lead to dilation of the coronary arteries and a reduction in oxygen consumption, which itself comes from a decreased peripheral resistance, meaning a decreased afterload. So basically, the heart is pushing against less resistance and so won't use as much oxygen. The non-dihydropyridines may also be used in stable angina as they decrease heart rate and contractility, leading to less myocardial oxygen demand. Prince Metal's angina, meaning angina as a result of vasospasm in the coronary vasculature, has calcium channel blockers as its first line treatment. Other uses of calcium channel blockers include Raynaud's phenomenon, particularly amlodipine or nifedipine, treating post-subarachnoid hemorrhage associated vasospasm that can lead to brain ischemia. Nimodipine is usually the drug of choice. Due to their effects on the conduction velocity, the non-dihydropyridines also act as an antiarrhythmic agent. They are class four antiarrhythmics. Finally, they can be used as migraine prophylaxis. Verapamil is an example. Side effects can be quite extensive. Headaches, flushing, lightheadedness, and ankle edema are common complaints. The edema happens because it's mostly an arterial vasodilation, 
leading to a higher hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries, leading to fluid extravasation. Another side effect is reflex tachycardia, meaning the heart rate increases as a result of the vasodilation induced by the drugs. This can be useful in some cases, like hypertensive patients with bradycardia, but this is also the reason that drugs like nifedipine are not used in myocardial infarction or unstable angina, because the tachycardia could increase the oxygen demand and lead to ischemia. Non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers in particular can cause constipation and gingival hyperplasia. Overall, we always need to consider dihydropyridine versus non-dihydropyridine when giving calcium channel blockers. Non-dihydropyridines are contraindicated in patients with heart block, as well as usually not being given alongside beta blockers due to the risk of causing heart block.